Okay, so just to give a quick heads up to someone who's watching this, uh, Evelyn and I are talking about the live text, and she has questions about how to get into it or how to put things into it, Evelyn. I can get into it. I have an account, but when it says post to live text, I'm not sure where do I take that. I mean, where do okay. I get the link to post? I guess that's where I'm struggling, how to post it. Sure. So, like, when you look at Module 1, all Module 1 is um, is the test that you took, and your grade is in there now. Right. I saw that. Okay. So, all you need to do is to go in on the template side and put your grade in here, which was A+, plus, by the way. So, that's all. Now, let's let's do another one like the one you're doing today. Okay, so, so slow down just a little. I just need to go in and put, like, the, the number score on your template, where it comes right. up, like, uh, right. anywhere on so, there. So, yeah, uh-huh. The, can the I go on with the comment? You can, yep. Okay, okay. But, but let me show you, because it's real different from here on out. So let's look at Module 2. So in Module 2, what it's saying, and let me open it up. In Module 2, what it's asking you to do is it wants you to put in the link to your voice thread that you're going to be creating that is living inside of here, inside of the Schoology. Okay. Now, I can walk you through all of that today, but all you're going to do is, in the comments, you're just going to copy and paste that URL, you know, like up here. You're just going to paste that. So let me jump in real fast. Let me back up a page here. And let's jump to that Schoology account. Here it is. And so this is our class. And all you're going to do here is you're going, this is all the stuff that's in our, our class that you can use. And we'll get into this even more when we get going. Um, you're basically just going to put in a post, and I I'm having trouble with that because I'm the owner of this. And it's like, well, here's Steve. Here's everything. So if I go up here, go here, excuse me. If I go to home, and I'm going to go over here. As you can see, here's another group of kids that are in here. I'm going to add a post to this. And to do that, I click on next to post. Now, what we're going to end up doing here in a few minutes is I'm going to show you how to take your voice thread and put it in here. And when you do that, then this this will show up, and you'll grab this up here, this URL, and put it over into the live text. Does that make sense? Which will be the the URL for my voice thread that I will yep. complete. Okay. Yeah. You see right here where it says link? Yeah. That is where we're going to take the link that our voice thread makes. We're going to put it in here. And then we're going, we're going to give it a title, you know, Evelyn's voice thread or Evelyn's uh, whatever. And we're going to attach it. Then when you post it, and I'll go ahead and post this because it will let me. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to post it too someplace. So I'm going to post this 
to EDAP 587 module 2. And then it says post. And there I am. There's my post. Okay? Yes. Okay? When I click on that post, what it will allow me to do then is I can grab all of this from up here and throw that over into my uh, live text. Okay? And I post that, in the, post that, that into the comments section. The, putting in comments is fine. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Okay, so let me jump back now <laughs> and get back to where I wanted to start. So what I have in this module is a lot of stuff. There is a, a lot of stuff. Um, and so here is my talking about all the stuff, if you want to listen to that. Or you can go into it, and you can start right here. Now, this is the chapter from Terry Anderson that forms the basis of this module. Uh, this is what I call it Foundations of Understanding Online Learning and Teaching. And see, and Terry basically takes you through a theory of online learning, where it comes from, um, and so on and so on. Learner-centered, it's a really good thing. Now, if you don't want to have to put up with that, go here. Now I'm paper. I, I have to have a hard copy sometimes, so I have printed that. <laughs> okay. Well, if you do both, you'll really get it. Okay. Uh, I like this. I don't. I. I don't like this because of the horrible sound quality, but she does a really nice job of kind of putting together all the ideas that uh, Terry uh, postulates. And like she says, he never really comes up with a theory of online learning. He basically says, so here are the things that make up uh, online learning. This is going to be your link to the voice thread that you'll make. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, this essentially is a folder that shows you everything you need to know about voice thread, but I'm going to walk you through it here in a minute and you'll get it. But here are the other pieces you need to watch. This is the paradigm shift. This is a really good set of three little videos right here. Uh, Joel Barker put this out many years ago. I think it's in the 1980s. But it still holds up today. And he's talking about how difficult it is for new ideas to gain a foothold. And that's why we kind of, especially in education, we kind of look around and we're like, wait a minute. What happened to the thing we used to do? Um, paradigm shifts are extremely hard to do. Uh, again, in education, education is probably the champion of hanging on to things to the very last minute. And then what they'll do is just drop everything. I was at a KTIP meeting today, and I was sitting there with the intern, and the principal looked over at me and said, so we're going to be getting rid of the PGIS uh, system that we use for student or for uh, teacher evaluation. That's what I hear. Well, isn't that stupid? We put it in place just two years ago. That's right. It did not make a paradigm shift. So in other words, it's, it's rejected. Uh, it's a really nice video. And I've, what I've done with this is I've essentially put the pieces in place it help you. It's like an hour long, but I cut it down to, what is that, eight minutes. So it's about 20 minutes long. And then I love this story. And so I put that in there, too, about the pig. Now, this is Sir Ken Robinson, who's talking about changing education paradigms. Uh, this one really hits home. This is what you and I have to deal with on a daily basis. And he explains, you know, again, why it's so hard for us to change paradigms. This is loaded with good stuff. And again, it's only about 10 minutes long, 11 minutes long. Um, 
you know, what I'm saying to you is, as you watch these videos, it kind of gives you the fodder for when you go to build your voice thread. I'm going to jump through some of this. He does a beautiful job with this. Uh, this is a guy by the name of John Abbott. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Thank goodness it's only two minutes long because he'll put you to sleep. I actually know Dr. Abbott. I don't know him. I've met him. Um, he is a, a brilliant man, and a lot of stuff that's in uh, education theory uh, that came out of that guy's head. But constructivism basically says something very simple. Uh, we're constantly building new ideas based upon old knowledge. What happens is when kids are confronted with new knowledge that they don't have a construct for previously, then it's like there's this just disconnect and the sparks fly and kids don't understand. This happens all the time in online learning because you are presented with a totally different set of information and if you don't have other pieces, aka video, aka PDF, that meets your learning style, then you make it's very difficult for you to put the two together. And then I put in something here called inquiry based learning. because um, it you know, it's kinda hot right now. Uh, I probably should put something in here on project based learning. And maybe I will. Uh, but let's so that's the content. That's in other words, that's what you're going to watch, read, uh, you know, whatever your style is. Uh, Terry's I actually know Terry Anderson. I really do know Terry Anderson, and um, he teaches. Uh, he's still at Athabasca. I think he is. He's still at the Athabasca University. Um, and people always people say to me all the time, "Why do you have all these friends in Canada?" Well, it's very simple. Uh, next time we get together, we'll learn about knowledge building principles that were created by a lady by the name of Marlene Scardamelia and her partner, Carl Breiter. Um, and I have, I, I have worked with Marlene and Carl, and I've sat at a pub with Marlene and Carl, and I've been to Marlene and Carl's house. Um, had a wonderful many, many dinners there. But the thing is about Canada is is a huge, huge place with not a lot of people. And so they have been doing online learning. And as you remember from module one, online learning has been called different things over the years. In Canada, they use radio originally. Well, originally they used correspondence schools, but they also did radio. And then they were the first to really get into television uh, teaching. And so when the Internet comes along, they just went to it like ducks take the water because they have had all of this experience with using online, or not online, but distance learning. And so some of the biggest names that there are in distance education come out of Canada. George Siemens is another one. He has a concept called people to people, uh, P to P. And what he basically postulates is that if you don't have a relationship with the person you're doing the online learning with, then the learning really doesn't take place. It, there's a vacuum there caused by the fact that the learner and the teacher don't really have a relationship. And that is probably the biggest problem, I think, with online learning that we see. Um, you have met me face to face and we've sat and chatted. So you have an image of me. You can kind of see me when you hear me talking to you. But I've seen many, many online courses where you don't know who that person is. And what's even worse, I've seen many, many online courses where there's no voice. There's, there's nothing that connects you to that person who has created that course. I've um, taken some like that. <laughs> yeah. And George is... Uh, George is um, 
he has he has uh i think kind of bumped people the wrong way and uh which is a shame because he's a good guy i've also met george uh this last one is a guy by the name of stephen donaldson he works out of i think australia now he started out in canada and then he went to australia as you could probably guess Australia has a profile very similar to Canada. It's a great big place, not a lot of people, and so distance ed and the ideas around distance ed, a lot of them um, took place in, and started growing in uh, Australia. All right, that's probably more than you ever want to know, but it's important to understand that this this idea about online learning, unfortunately, uh, has suffered from a lot of just what I call packaging. You know, you put the stuff together, you put it online, throw a couple of quizzes in there, you've got online learning, and, and that's not it at all. So you're going to basically get yourself uh, up to speed on all these ideas, and then you're going to be ready to dive into here. And you notice it has a VT next to it. That stands for voice thread. So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to wait a second. And then it will take me over to the voice thread. Now, the first time you do this, there's going to be like three boxes here. One's going to say course view. One's going to say individual view. And I frankly have forgotten what the third one is. These two are the only ones you need to know. Just click on course view. What that means is your voice thread, as you can see up here, EDAP 587, it'll show up in our class. That's all it means. Now, if you accidentally hit the individual, no harm, no foul, because you still can get your voice thread out and put it somewhere else. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. So, so the main thing see, is getting this out and putting on Schoology. Right. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really quite simple. Now. When it says, well, there's nothing here, dummy. Well, yeah, because I haven't made one. So I'm going to click on one, create one. And then you see it says create a new voice thread. Well, yeah, I have to do that. And then it's just sitting here very quietly waiting. Here's the key to voice threads. When you click on add media, it wants to know where you're getting it from. And so the first thing you can do is add from your computer. Now, let's take a step back and think about what Steve said. I'm going to read, I'm going to watch, listen to all this stuff that he's put in here. And then when it comes time for you to put it together into a coherent form that you're going to present, when it says my computer, what it's really looking for is one of these. It's waiting for you to upload a PowerPoint. Now, if PowerPoint's not your thing and Word is, fine. Upload either one. I like PowerPoints because I, I can play in a PowerPoint. I can put text in. I can put pictures in. So in my PowerPoint, what I can do is I can go out and find pictures that represent paradigm shift and I can put that in here. And I can say, well, one of the first things we need to understand about online learning is it represents a paradigm shift. And a paradigm shift is all about this, all about that. Um, and then you put in another slide, in another slide. Let me see. Let me just do a My Computer here. And let me go find a, a PowerPoint that I can throw into this thing. So you can see what it looks like when I get it done. Let's go here and let me do that one. We're going to open that. Now, notice this is what I love about VoiceThread. The first time you do something in VoiceThread, it says, hold on there, sporty. Give me a title to this thing. And you know why it does that, Evelyn? Because you can't lose it. 
That's the beauty of a voice thread. So I'm going to say Steve's test, and then I'm going to go ahead and say, go right ahead, do what you need to do. Now, what it's doing, as you can see over here, is it's processing. So it's basically looking for that document, that PowerPoint that I just uh, threw at it. And when it puts it in, it's going to make it into a set of slides, just like it were a PowerPoint. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw up a Word document so you can see what that looks like as well. Um, you do not have to do, you do what you're most comfortable with. And by the way, you can throw a PDF in there as well. The thing about VoiceThread when I teach it um, is I say to people, what can you put in the VoiceThread? What do you got? And I'm going to show you that. So as you can see, if I wanted to put in just a picture, so if I found a really good picture out there that would be one that I could use that I can talk about, and that's the power of the voice thread is it allows you to add your voice to it. And so you don't want to go into enormous detail on these things because your voice can fill in the details. And as you can see, that PowerPoint just flew in in all of its glory, I'm still looking for a, um, oh, here we go. Again, just so you can see what it looks like. So now we're uploading a, let's go down here and look. So I uploaded a picture, and I uploaded a uh, doc, a Word doc. And then here's my PowerPoint. Now, let me help you understand now what happens. So at this point, uh, I got a lot of material here. Oh, let me show you one more. This is, I, I love, as you can probably guess, I love, love, love uh, voice threads. If I go down here to this where it says Earl, it's waiting for me to add a file. And the way I do that is I go to the tube of the U. And let's go to my page. In other words, all my stuff that I own. And I can grab any one of these videos, grab this, take that. Now, of course, I'm going to find something germane to the topic here. But if I put that in here now, and I save it, what's going to happen is it's now going to load in that video. So as you can see, there's just about everything. You can, it even lets you put in Excel files. You can put into the voice thread. Now this is what makes it different. And this is why I say to you, don't waste a lot of time building a lot of detail because you're going to add the detail here. So here's my first slide, and I'm now going to comment on that slide. So I'm going to click on it where it says comment, and this little plus sign down here, when I click on that, opens up, and now I have multiple ways of putting in my thoughts my spoken thoughts about my uh, content that I have in here. So I don't have to have a page of, of 100 words. I can basically say, uh, this is my understanding of what a paradigm shift means. Put it there. And then when you come in here and you tell it that you want to allow it to record you, it's now recording me. And I can say, uh, the idea of, of gamification of writing was a presentation done by Tiffany Walker, who is a teacher out in Bullock County uh, uh, East, and her presentation is amazing. Now, I can stop that and listen to it. And if I like that, I can move to my next slide, either by using the arrows, which are a little hard to see here. Oh, here they are. Excuse me. 
right here. Or I just use the arrows on my keyboard. Now, here is the next slide. Again, hit the record. It's now recording me. And if I remember correctly, what uh, Tiffany was talking about in this particular presentation that she did was she was having people look at the differences in writing scores uh, between fifth and eighth grade, or sixth and eighth grade, excuse me. Stop. If I like it, save it. Move on to the next slide. And all you're doing is, is you're putting in your two cents worth. Now, let me get all the way to that one that had the, uh, let's see if it's going to come up. I wasn't sure if that was fully uh, uploaded yet. But when it comes up to the YouTube, the nice thing about it is when you hit the plus sign and now you record, it won't play the video until whatever you recorded has stopped. So you can put up here, you know, let's, let's do this the right way, Evelyn. Let's go back uh, and... Let's get a real YouTube video that would be appropriate to what we're doing. So I'm going to go YouTube, and I'm going to put up here uh, Paradigm Shift. Let's see what we can find. There you go. And you can watch this. You might even find a cute one here. Some of these look really interesting. Oh, there's Mr. Jobs. I don't think you're going to find uh, our young man, that, or not young man, not a young man anymore. I don't think you're going to find Joel in here because his stuff is sold through um, ASED, and it's still held there. But see, you get down into here, where you've got these people who are doing their own take on a paradigm shift. And you might find somebody down here that you, when you watch it, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, looky here. You know what made this? Can you guess what made this? Uh, uh, cartoon something? Go Let's go animate. Okay, yes. Yeah. This, this is a go animate, which you're going to play with. Uh, I just find it interesting that here it is. Okay, let's copy that and throw it into our voice thread. Because, see, what I'm trying to get you to realize is what you can do with this is you can just put in a whole cloth, you know, your own video that you have found. I'll go ahead and delete the one that was going to come in. You could put in your own video, and that way you basically can say, let me share with you a video I found that really helped me understand paradigm shift. Done. Okay? And that's what's happening right now. So that's loading in. Um, it does take a while for them to load in the first time. After that, they're fine. You know, they play right away. So I don't know if, if uh, it's because the uh, folks that, oh, there it went, it's popped in. So if we click on that, and then I click on comment, you see it? I'm going to stop it. And what it's going to do is, it's now going to let me, you see it, video doodling. When you're recording, you can draw on the screen. Okay. I'll show you that. Uh, and you might want to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, got it. I'm going to allow my recording. So this is a video that was created using GoAnimate that is playing Paradigm Shift. Enjoy, enjoy. I'm going to stop it. Now I'm going to save it. 
So when I go on to this slide, you hear me talking, and then you'll see the video play. I really like the way it handles uh, YouTube now. All right, so that's an awful lot of stuff. <laughs> Are you getting the idea behind it? Yes, I have. Okay, a couple of questions. Sure. If I take, take it from PowerPoint and I put it into VoiceThread, I can't make any changes once I put it into... Oh, excellent question. That's right. That's right. But here's the interesting thing about a VoiceThread. When you create a VoiceThread, you can go back to the VoiceThread and add more material in it. And like, let's say you have it in a web page or you have it in a Schoology. Uh, the material that you add to it will come through and the students will be able to see uh, VoiceThread might be for September. Here's what we're studying in September. And here's some resources I need you to watch. And here's some things I need for you to know. Then you can go back to the VoiceThread, add in the material for October, and in your Schoology, that will then show up. You don't have to load it back into the Schoology again. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're done. We've made it. We created it. Now, how do I get it out of here and send it over to the um, Schoology? Okay, let me ask another question. Suppose I've got it on here. You can't, and I have I have a video. Do I have to put the, the YouTube videos or whatever at the end? Is there? A, can I put it in oh, no. a certain Oh, no. I'm sorry. I was just throwing them in there because that's where okay. I was. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you could put a YouTube video smack dab in the middle of it. You could okay. make the whole thing. You could make the whole thing. So how many ideas do we have here? We have Paradigm Shift. We have, I mean, there's all kinds of ideas you can pull out of uh, Terry's stuff. But, you know, I'm not saying make a 20-slide voice thread here. Right. Goodness gracious, no. Anywhere from six to eight, and you're golden. Okay? So you could literally find media that represents each one of the slides, put it in here with your comments, you're done. Okay? Okay. Okay. The only reason why I showed you the PowerPoint is a lot of people, when they first sit down with this, they can get their head around a PowerPoint very easily. Um, when you start talking to people about, you know, there's this thing out there, this enormous resource called YouTube. Go find the, the ideas that you're looking for there. Find the one that makes the best sense to you. Put it into the voice thread, because that's what you're doing when you show it to kids. You're saying, look, look at this, um, and then your commenting is helping me understand what I'm going to watch. So let's get it out of here and take it to Schoology. I'm going to go in bed. Um, I do not want the embed code. I want the link. The link. Okay? And make sure... By default, it does it, but just make sure that it says allow anyone to view and comment. And now I'm going to go and copy the link. Okay? Now, let me close that. And I'm going to show you, just for gig. Okay, Steve, you can stop now. Thanks, Steve. You can stop now. Um, let's go back a couple of slides here. And I hate to mess up <laughs> her good work, but I, I do want to show you this. So see, when I click on the recording that I'm going to do, down here in the lower right, there's a little pencil that appears. If I click on that, now I have a box of crayons. And so like in this situation, what I can do is I can come in here and say, this is the most important thing you need to understand about filling in the gap. Now, if I had a picture, if I had a picture that was uh, showing kids something, whether it's a water cycle, um, how uh, evaporation works, I could annotate it by drawing on the screen while I talk about it. I just wanted to show you that before we move on. 
I'm going to jump back out of here. Remember, it's always, always saving. So you don't need to freak out about, do I save this somewhere? That first time you go to create it, it actually saved it, and everything you do thereafter, it's saving. I'm going to jump back into that link. It takes me over to the Schoology course. I don't know why it doesn't just open up, but it doesn't. And I'm going to make a new post. And in my post, all I'm going to do, now let me just jump into the one I already made. So let's edit that. So here's my post. It says my voice thread. There's my link. There it is. Attach it. Save changes. And now, if I click on that link, it takes me to my voice thread. And anybody... And anybody can now see it. Um, to get back, I just go back to my Schoology tab. And, and that's all there is to this. It's that, really that simple. Um, and then your basic is just going to go in and copy the URL. Excuse me, I put the wrong one there. Okay, I'm just going to ask you to open up the uh, voice post. thread. Okay. Oh, you want me to do the voice thread again? So no, I know, how, I know how to do that. I know how to okay. get into the tools. Okay, now what are you, when, how do I get it from there to live text? I just. All you have to do is if you go in, I, let me make sure of this. I go in and edit. All I have to do is there it is. Copy that and throw it in. If you copy that, see it's the link to the to the module. Okay? Does that make sense? See where I, it, it takes me here, and then in here is where I find the post. And then I can see your post that you have created. Does that make sense? Did you lose me? I am not hearing you. Are you hearing me? Let me go over here and check. Because what I wanted you to see was what I do is I want you to understand this. When I click on that link that you'll have in the live text, what it's going to do is it's going to bring me back to here. For me to see what you've done, I click here on updates. You see there's my, there's my voice thread. And so the update is basically just keeps track of whatever new has been added into the, the Schoology. Now make sure you understand that. It's not like that link that you're going to take and put into Live Text is going to bring me to your specific post. I have to click on Updates to see the post. Okay? Now, there's another way that you can do that. Let's see if it works. 
So if I click here and I jump back into my voice thread and I do an embed, I'm not sure if Schoology allows me to embed so it's live. Let's go look at that real fast. Well, did you... I must, when I created this, I must have put it in. Yeah, I did. I put it in another one. There, there it is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this one. And I'm going to go embed it. And I'm going to copy the embed code. Now, if I go to our Schoology course, Let's see what happens if I paste that in. Title, test, attach. And I'm going to save the changes. Well, some gun that does work. That's good to see. So either way will work. And then all I'm going to do to give it back to Steve is to copy that URL, put that in the live text, he will come in and see the update. Good for you, Schoology. You fixed it. This wasn't working at one point. Is why I'm kind of smiling to myself. That's good to see. All right, Evelyn. Was there anything else? I'm a little bit worried because I haven't heard from you, kiddo. Can you type at me that you're hearing me or not hearing me? Okay. Now can right. you hear me? Yep, now I can hear you. Hear okay. you just fine. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, don't worry about it. Well, maybe you just I think maybe you just left again. I tell you what I'm going to do. I will stop the recording. There.